And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother here in the temple, creator of the Byte RPG, which, we t which we've previously discussed, and now bringing back, bring into the forefront its first two setting books, that being Ashes of the Heavens and Verascus Dying World, the one and only R.G. DeBarros. How are we doing today, man? Hi, fine, fine, thank you for inviting me again to your channel, Milda. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for thank you for coming back. It's always it's always a treat to have you have you in. So you. now put now first off, congratulations on managing to get the to get the core bytes RPG off of the uh, ground and into and into people's hands. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was uh, a very emotional a milestone for for myself uh, being able to, to run uh, a su successful Kickstarter, mm -hmm. uh, the first one of the list. Now, what would what would you say have been some of the learning experiences that you've had that you had um, in the aftermath of pu of putting out the of putting out the um, the core book for Byte? Yeah, uh, you you say regarding the the Kickstarter itself. Um, just 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 in ge just in general, some of the things that yeah. you that you had le that you had learned throughout throughout the experience of putting the th of putting the thing out and and people's initial reactions. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, certainly, to what it was a, uh, a lot of work. Um, um, it all started uh, eight, nine years ago, and, and it was a learning process uh, throughout the whole time. Uh, um, well, the, the thing that uh, I thought was uh, the hardest one is regarding uh, making um, the marketing, marketing side of things. Uh, uh, probably I should have relied on a professional to do that. Uh, because you either have to either invest time or money because uh, it doesn't matter if you have a good product or, or not if you if the people doesn't know that you're out there putting yourself out there in, in the market uh, so I chose the the to invest time and it's not something that I'm comfortable doing so I, I went to Twitter for the first time just to to, to make the make the whole project pos possible and in, in a certain way I, I was uh, successful the the Kickstarter was was funded but it, it was probably the hardest hardest part of it uh, the most um, enjoyable part of the the whole process was uh, doing the the art side of things, uh, talking with uh, artists and and have uh, your ideas uh, become reality before you. You see the words you have imagined uh, as they create the the, the art. Uh, it was a great experience and 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 the important thing regarding the Kickstarter itself, I, I guess, is communication. No? Uh, always being in touch with with uh, your backers and throughout the whole campaign, I guess, we had like third updates and you, you did it, we did it uh, during the, the pandemic that was uh, problematic, but thankfully you managed to not only um, send all the rewards to, to the backers, but do, do it so, do it so uh, indexed a uh, promised estimated time that that was really important for myself and in kind of her these days <laughs> regarding kickstarters no but it's it was something like a uh, matter of honor for me mm -hmm. now 
the last time that I had you on, we did touch on some of the campaign settings that you had that you had planned, and yeah, obviously for this Kickstarter, this is the first this is the first wave of the um, campaign settings that you that you're going to be working with. Um, yeah, we'll start with we'll start with Ashes of the Heavens. Um, mm -hmm. So the fr the first question that I uh, that I obviously ha obviously have to ask is how is how did um how did the idea for this particular setting come about? Was this a kind of setting or a kind of playstyle that you were um, already doing before before Byte was Byte, or was it something else? Yes, uh, it was a setting that uh, was created even before Byte. Um, it was. Uh, I was in the process of, of trying to, to come up with uh, my own uh, rule system because I, I was not satisfied with the, the current one uh, I was playing with my, my friends and I was kind of designing um, a game system that was card based and I created this setting for, for it. It was like a swashbuckling type of uh, setting uh, with uh, intrigue and magic, and also uh, technology fueled by magic, and and when I started designing Byte, I transported the, the, this word to to Byte, and it grew organically to to our game sessions. And uh, it, it draws inspiration from many kinds of sources, no, uh, uh, movies, books, uh, other words uh, from from RPGs also. Mm -hmm. And I'm not uh, trying to 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 state here that I'm come up with something that's completely original, but uh, we must uh, draw from the sources and create something that. Uh, feels unique um, and, and, and it has uh, as, uh, um, it, it, it makes some some different elements to to create this world that I guess um, you 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 feel unique for for the players that that take part in it mm -hmm. um, of course uh, Alexander Dumas, of course, is a, is a big inspiration with uh, the Three Musketeers. The, the air is basically piking shot mm -hmm. air uh, with Musketeers, and and we have uh, also spells. Uh, the spells, uh, of course, it uses the bite role playing game system, mm -hmm. which was uh, I tried. Kind of, I was uh, inspired by the John T. Strange, Mr. Norrell novel, how magic works in, in that in that book, where it's not uh, so much pyrotechnic, but and it's kind of uh, slow in a way, uh, but it also it's very powerful and. And also that uh, kind of dictates uh, how the, the the world feels, uh, its pace. You all probably won't, won't have a spellcaster casting fireball-like spells during combat. But uh, through the the magic system presented by Byte, you you can uh, you'll be able to perhaps perform spells that can affect the whole world. Mm -hmm. Um. That's that's the, the the how how to design the its balance, and but uh, probably the the most uh, unique thing with the setting is that <coughs> every play character uh, is born with uh, divine power, and not not everywhere in the world, but uh, the cards, the heroes, they are and. And th th these are random, random powers. You each each character will probably have just one, and they are kind of uh, unique in the world. So you have all these uh, factions, factions in the world vying for power, uh, secret organizations, governments, uh, kings, and uh, um, 
um, the, these captains of industry, merchant houses, and they they search for this kind of individuals to tap on their power, try, try to hire them, or or even um, uh, if they they can they, they are not able to to, to hire such, such such persons, and if they perceive them as as a, as a threat, they they try to, to eliminate them. So. The dynamic of the of the the adventures will revolve around a bit on the side of things. Uh, the players being sought off, sought out, or or chased by the this organization because of uh, who they are, uh, the powers they have, and and also uh, the world is is. Uh, Changed by this technology, technology fueled by by magic or divine power, mm-hmm. and so you have like uh, airships and trains, in, in, and so the world is kind of globalized, albeit it it has a 1970s like technolo- technological level, but uh, it's kind of globalized. You have all these these nations around the world, uh, and and I also try to to uh, offer this this kind of uh, globe trotting uh, adventures for for the players. So you you in one mission you be uh at a, uh, in a certain nation uh, with a certain culture and and another one you may be at the other side of the world doing other kind of stuff um now when now if i'm now if i'm not mistaken both of the both of the setting books are going to be around 70 pages which yeah. brings me to an interesting question with something that's noted on the Ashes of the Heavens um, so, um, description that mm-hmm. you're de- that it's going to be have you're going to be putting in um, over twenty nations and the main events in mm-hmm. about four thousand years of history. That's that's quite that so, that sounds like quite a lot of quite a lot of materials. So a big question that I have with that when it comes to when it comes to the um, the lore to- toolkit balance is how do you make sh- how do you make sure you're not that one you're not putting too much in there and two that you don't run into um, met that you don't run into meta narrative issues that can happen with some games like even um, stuff like Shadowrun or L five R. Um. Oh. Um. The, the, of course, the, the world, uh, in a certain sense, of course, draws from our, our own history. So, uh, my my goal is not to to create uh, an atlas of the world uh, in a, a, a history compendium of the world. Uh, I I don't I w- didn't want to um, overwhelm the the game master with too too much information. Uh, so I try to to create a balance between uh, lore and and toolkit. That that was my my vision. So I hint uh, at stuff. For instance, uh, when I go to, uh, to talk regarding, uh, let's say, the kingdom of Andros One, which heavily based on United Kingdom. Uh, you get that you you get that uh, I draw inspiration from from England's history and when writing that word so you can feel uh, feel in uh, with your own knowledge uh, fill in the blanks uh, but uh, I'll talk ab- about how how it's its form of government uh, how are its um, international relations with its neighbors um, which is its uh, main city, which is its religion. And uh, I also put um, a section where I, I talk a bit, some some form of trivia, to give you hints and idea about how uh, that nation operates, how how it would be to be, uh, to be uh, in that country. 
and then I complement that with uh, the toolkit. Uh, the toolkit is like uh, a, a random generator tables mm -hmm. that you you can generate stuff uh, on the fly. For instance, um, well, wha what's the main export uh, for the on Adobe Empire? What's the main port for the Republic of Eller? How are the relations between uh, Vutalav and the King of uh, of uh, Dayu and all of those things uh, if you, ha you don't have a clear answer you can simply roll on a, on a table you find out how how they are for instance and in these uh, tables I have tables for uh, the the big stuff like uh, the international relations between nations uh, and also for the, the small stuff, you can generate uh, cities, you can generate antagonists, you can generate uh, adventure plots. Mm -hmm. And with um, Ashes of the Heavens, like uh, the other setting books for the Battle Royale playing game, I try to focus what I f and what I feel it's more relevant to to the world. Mm -hmm. so, uh, for instance, uh, since uh, the world. Of New Orthos, uh, the world of Ash of the Heavens, is a world that's heavily globalized. You have our ships, you have ships, you have trains. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it didn't make much sense for me, to, for instance, to create for this setting um, extra rules, right? Uh, like, like well, uh, you begin here at this X, it's a fourth X. Now you have to try to survive. No, it's yeah, but but you can do that. You can, for instance, uh, take the no coin for chair on that it is it comes together with the battle and playing game as an appendix. It has uh, extra rules, and if you really really like extra kind of adventures, you can incorporate that into your Ash of the Heavens adventures, for for instance. So. Uh, one of the the main goals with the setting books uh, was to not um, simply repeat the same stuff uh, from book to book. Uh, every book uh, aims uh, for a certain objective, a cert uh, aims to try to offer a, cent a certain type of experience uh, for the players and uh, focus on that. Uh, focus is, is the main question for uh, the main uh, objective, the main main thing on my head when when writing each of these books. So, for instance, uh, I talk about a bit uh, regarding intrigue. Intrigue is a main component for me regarding adventures in the Ash of the Ravens uh, setting. So it was important for me to create a, a robust um, generator for antagonists and adventure plots with uh, dilemmas and, and twists and, and things like that. So you probably won't see this kind of uh, tables on other setting books. Mm -hmm. um. Now let let me get let me get the dumb question out out of my system when it comes to Ashes of the Heavens. Given how there's a there's a fair amount of um, tech punk with a, with a lot of its motifs. Mm -hmm. Will there mm -hmm. be airships? <laughs> airships? Yes. Yes, it's it's going to be it's going to be the airships in the are going to be the airships in in Ash of the Heavens. Yes, mm -hmm. and. Um, it yeah yes uh, it's uh, in, including uh, in the the city generator you have like a uh, one structure that may come up when design our ship is the airship mooring tower uh, it certainly was was uh, as a an element that fits very well in, in the world and one thing that uh, I, I always enjoyed as a game master, and I, and I try to perhaps to include in, in every single setting that uh, that I write, is 
to give many options for for game masters. Uh, one problem that I I had and I have as as game master is is this problem yeah, that I I almost seduced with okay I'm I, I, I'm I'm enjoying this setting, but how about uh, changing game? Let's let's try do Star Wars this time or next time. No, I, now I want to to run a a game like of tool or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it was important that every setting book uh, gave uh, not just one or two thematic elements for for the game masters, but more than a few, so that you have a bigger playground to, to play in. Uh, so that's because in in Ash of the Hands you have uh, ships and spells and divine powers and intrigue and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, with sometimes within sometimes within setting books in mm -hmm. in, pl in plenty of games. Um, there will be there will be the fair share of toolkits, but there will also be new there will also be new rules added in. Um, mm -hmm. Is or either new rules, new tr new tricks, skills, what what have you? Um, mm -hmm. Is that some is that something that one can expect in in the se in the setting books, or is it go or is it going to be primarily using um, the exact the exact same sandbox in um, core byte? Yes, uh, I'm glad to to tell you that no, it does not include any new rules. Um, the the main gist of the the whole project was that you have the the byte core book, you have all the rules, all the rules. So the only thing that you have in the setting books are the thematic elements. Uh, I'm not changing uh, any rule uh, for for the setting books. So all the, the abilities, all the powers, all the spells that you're going to use in Nash of the Heavens, you'll find in in the, the core rulebook, the core byte role playing game rulebook. Um, doing doing it otherwise, yeah, I, I wouldn't be okay with that. And frankly, thankfully, more than frankly, uh, I found out that it was not uh, necessary, um, and after all, the the Batman playing game has almost 450 pages of of rules. I, I guess that's more than sufficient to, mm -hmm. to run all all of the settings. Um, and the uh, that br now that br that brings me to um. To Verascus, mm -hmm. which um, I could, s when somebody looks at the cover art for Verascus, and I'm, pre I'm pretty sure this isn't the first time you've gotten this remark, I could see them look. I can see them looking at it like like they are doing, like you guys are doing, like you guys are doing um, Mad Max. Yeah. Um, but it, but was that was that kind was that kind of set set up a influence for you guys? Yes, uh, most definitely it was. Um, you, when you when you look at D and D, for instance, you always identify uh, Dark Sun as the Mad Max setting for D and D. But uh, your Axis Dying World goes one step further, and it's it's more Mad Max than Dark Sun is. For for instance, you have the the vehicles. And the vehicles are an important uh, part um, of of the team of the uh, the group of play, uh, the characters that are going to face the, that world because uh, it's a very dangerous world. Uh, you have to constantly be looking for water, food, fuel, and ammo. And this uh, setting goes a completely different uh, opposite way uh, than the one uh, from Earth of the Rev Heavens. It's more geared to survival. No? Uh, instead of being heroes on globe-trotting adventures, you are just a bunch 
of people trying to survive a very dangerous world, uh, a goal for for first adventure may be just trying to to survive, to have enough uh, food and water and, and fuel to survive another day. And and the rule of the land is is uh, is violence. You no, know? the, the, the stronger uh, dictates how everything uh, must be. And you have these uh, situations where you probably you have the luck to find a settlement, and you go, oh, great, great. <laughs> Now you can find some f some food, some water. You are, you are not going to to die from from starvation, but then you have to deal with uh, the people that are that are running the, those settlements. And uh, it's a very bleak world. Uh, to compensate for that a bit, um, the Iraq's dying world applies the fortune points rule. That you find in in Python or in game, that is basically uh, a rule that gives you a second chance when disaster happens, and um, because the things like uh, vehicular combat, uh, if you try to just just trying to jump from a speeding vehicle to onto another, if you fail the the, the test, you probably will, you end up dead. So I put it in there to, to try to balance things a bit. And the gist uh, of it, the, the explanation for it is that uh, you have these uh, trinkets or amulets or mementos and they kind of give you luck. And, and you, 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 may, you may even uh, try to steal this these mementos from uh, trinkets from defeated opponents to add to your uh, look pool, let's say, mm -hmm. and try to try to help you survive uh, longer in, in the world. But um, you basically you will be able to to use uh, the fort fortune points. You'll be most likely be used be able to use it once per session. Uh, the second time you'll be considerably more expensive, probably. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to to use it a second time in a, in a single section, and you cannot use it more than two twice per session. So, uh, if you are not careful enough, uh, you run out of luck and end up dead in in the desert. Mm -hmm. And well, is it, uh, well, there's a re there's a reason why. There's a reason why Mad Max used uh, used Australia as the as the ba as the backdrop for where they were going to film because both places are going to have plenty of things wanting you dead. Um, yeah. Um, and I went now. Um, the one of the things that it's, it's stated is going to be an emphasis with Ver, with Veraxis is helping GMs run open world survival with minimal prep. Um, yeah. And I'm, gu I'm guessing that re I'm guessing that represents the toolkit part of part of that book. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So my qu so my question is, how does it um, help GMs when it comes to doing o when it comes to doing open world survival? Does it does it lean on the hex crawl approach, or do you have something else in mind? Yes. Um, it, it it it's not enforced, but uh, the hex crawl approach it, it returns. Again, for the Arxidine World setting book, it's a core element for, for the setting. And if you uh, look at uh, both books, they have uh, almost exactly the same word count. So you are, you are offering um, the same size of content for both Arxis and Nash of the Heavens. They are roughly 10,000 words. Uh, text, uh, which is kind of double the size of No Coin for Charon. But if you look at uh, Ash of the Heavens, you probably you have like something like uh, two thirds of it are going to be lore, and perhaps one third 
is going to be the toolkit. Mm -hmm. And with your uh, access dying world is kind of the, uh, the other way. You have like perhaps two thirds or even more. It's toolkit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like the other third is, is lore. And even though it's kind of an optional lore. Uh, one thing that I, I had fun while writing writing your accident word is come up coming up with these different kind of settlements and the weird costumes and traditions and rules they could have that could uh, e make it easy or very difficult to the life for for the, for the players and then I come up with with, the, with this. Uh, characters for for each settlement uh, like four at least each settlement has at least four characters they they and they are all kind of bizarre and punky in some way but all of that is optional and you as a gm you have the the chance when running your access to first first of all uh, randomly create the whole uh, wasteland, let's say, which is the, the big playground where the adventures uh, are going to happen. So, and then you create the thing, then you randomly determine, determine uh, where the cities, how many cities and where the cities sell settlements are going to be. And then you also, you randomly find uh, how they are. Mm -hmm. You can either uh, borrow one of the pre-existing settlements that will come to the book or you can generate one from from scratch uh, its technological level which species populated uh which kind of customs or weird traditions it has uh which is its main resources what what which it might be lacking does it need food or water mm -hmm. and um, which kind of uh, different uh, buildings or structures you can find on the settlement so um it is um of course it, it doesn't need to be like that when i g and when i ran ran uh, the air access dying world with my friends mm -hmm. I, I sat down and, and written for beforehand the, the adventure but uh, it is a setting that I think it's very easy for uh, the gym to, to simply sit with the players and let the dice mm -hmm. uh, create the, the dilemmas, the adventures, the situations, um, um, uh, life uh, in, in front of the players. And it's, it's a different experience, of course. Uh, some people will prefer uh, Arts of the Heavens, some people will prefer Iraq's Dying World. Mm -hmm. But there will probably be those that would like to to try both from time to time. Yeah. Now, one of the one of the key one of the key um, claims to fame with with um but with Byte is being able to mo being able to build a setting um through mo through modular mm -hmm. pieces. Um, yeah. So. With with that kind of thing in mind, I'd like to I'd like to um I'd like to pick your brain on a few on a few on a few pillars of that, just mm -hmm. to just to see what just to see where where um where each of these would be would be built on that on that kind of modularity. So for starters, um when it comes because of how tech based Ashes of the Heavens is, um mm -hmm. where where would you put its tech level? Yeah, um, your access. Uh, well, Ash of the Heavens is technological level three, which is gunpowder era mm -hmm. uh, that goes from uh, Pike and Shot era to the Napoleon Napoleonic Wars. Uh, your access dying world is kind of unique among the seven bite role playing games because. It's the one that uh, has the that how can I say the biggest spread of technological level because the history of the world is like it was once a very advanced world mm -hmm. and then cataclysm happened uh, the civilization collapsed 
and the people devolved. Uh, so you may find settlements in Araxes that are basically living in the Middle Ages, but you may also find uh, settlements uh, that are exist uh, in the ruins of the ancient mega cities and they have of course they are struggling but they have access uh, to higher technology may they may have um, machine guns and they will have uh, land vehicles perhaps even flying vehicles perhaps even mm -hmm. uh, a computer or two running on on fuel or whatever so yeah it's it's kind of um, you never sure of what you find in, in the wasteland and the generator uh, the toolkit um, also takes that in consideration when, when you are for instance creating a new settlement mm -hmm. you have uh, the, the generator help you find out if the what is the technological level for for the, that uh, that settlement uh, so ash of the heavens is tl3 and your accident world is tl from two to eight mm -hmm. and w now the next would be and would be um um ancestries and mm -hmm. when now, I'd, ima I'd imagine that when it comes to Ver when it comes to Veraxis, that's mainly going to be humans. Um, but when it comes when it comes to, but I'm per I'm guessing that there's going to be a bigger pool when it comes to um, Ashes of the Heavens. Yeah, um, the, actually, I guess they have uh, basically the same name number of species. Uh, I keep I keep using the species because it was the original term. It's the only regret I had I have regarding by Pen playing games is that I have not uh stick with the, the original term. So now I, I think it was better. So uh, each one like has has like eight species and but they are not exactly the same. But uh, both worlds are dominated by human, uh, humans or human-like species. So, uh, Ash of the Heavens is heavily human-centric. Uh, Araxis is kind of uh, the three main species that uh, run the world are those that I thought were the more the the ones more equipped to face its threat so it will be the the humans the Saravelds which are like the lizard men and the Barohaks which are kind of orcish so um yeah access is the world where definitely Mike makes might miss makes right so uh other species that do not excel those in that field they are somewhat left behind but you can create uh characters from from other species too but some some you represent uh in an accident world you represent um kind of setback because you have some species that are very vulnerable vulnerable to radiation such as the taulin and that may may be a problem. All right, I can I can certainly get I can certainly get that. Now, when it comes to skills um, with both of these, obviously there's a smorgasbord of skills that could that could be that could be discussed. Um, mm -hmm. So instead of instead of listing what skills would be a would would be available for each, um, I'd like mm -hmm. you I'd like you to go into which which skills you would you would actively um discourage is not necessarily fitting that the particular um settings yeah um let's see for ash of the the heavens um uh, technology is is not a, a skill presented in the world albeit there uh, there is technology 
in the world it's not advanced enough so uh it's it's all um the, the skill that ends up being used for for it is engineering which um encompasses um, um, everything relating to, to those advancements from airships to including automata. Mm -hmm. um, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, for instance, a seamanship is a very important skill in Nest of the Heavens and of course uh, a skill you, you won't find in Iraq's Dying World. Um, Iraq's Dying World also don't, doesn't have archery. Because um, I'm, I try to avoid um, putting too many skills, making too many skills available uh, for for each setting book, because it's kind of difficult, uh, creates uh, difficulties for for the players to to create uh, um, um, useful characters. Because uh, the more skills you have. The less skill, the less useful becomes each skill. So for for your accident world, all the bows and crossbows they become included in the maximum ship skill. And let me see what else. Um, technology technology in your accident world uh, is available, but um, some characters may not. Uh, be able to find use in it. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you do when creating a character for your accident world is choosing a cute a culture for for them. So you may create a character that comes from a more primitive culture that won't have use for technology technology like uh, computer stuff that may excel in using many weapons weapons for instance. Mm -hmm. Um, or the, well, the other way around. Um, drive, of course, is very important in your accident world, time world, but you won't find Nash of the Heavens. Mm -hmm. And I guess this, these are the, the most important observations regarding the skills yeah. with these words. Of course, um, there, there are skills that you, you you find very useful uh, in a, in a world uh, of intrigue like uh, Ash of the Heavens, like Lager the Man, uh, Stealth. Uh, Taming is also important for horse riding and stuff. Um, and in your axis. Um, uh, driving, of course, very important, and the combat skills you have to have at least one to to fend off uh, the enemies. Mm -hmm. Now, when it come now the last the last one that I think I think would be would be um, would be a ki would be um, a tricky one to list off mm. is um, thematic modules. Simply because there's a lot of ways that that can go, so mm -hmm. I'd so uh, with that with that I'd I'd be curious I'd be curious as to which as to a few examples of thematic modules that could be added onto either either one to have to, to put new spins on these settings, and which ones might have some complications if you were to add them. Yeah. Well, um, the the first thing that you you find when when you look into Earth of the Heavens and Iraq's Dying World is that uh, the book will open with a single sheet that will tell you which thematic uh, modules are applicable, and of course those that are not listed are not applicable to it to them. So, for instance, uh, Earth of the Heavens. Um, we, we have the the following thematic models that are applicable to it. It's spellcraft, mm -hmm. uh, divine powers, dreamscapes, which is an uh, important element of the setting. I forgot to mention before. Mm -hmm. Creatures, of course, 
é, automata, ships in, in airships, uhum. and organizations, uh, because of this faction interplay and e there, there's this, it, it's of course it's not mandatory, but you have this option where the the characters, the the group of player characters, they may come up and create their own faction inside the world. So between sessions, uh, you may play this short uh, kind of tabletop game where the player faction goes against uh, NPC factions of the world. And if they are success, success, successful in time, they, they will probably reach a level of power where they will be able to tackle mm -hmm. the main organizations in the world, including kingdoms, perhaps. So that's um, a meta objective, let's say, for, for the campaign and for the players. If uh, your access dying world, the thematic models that are applicable are spellcraft again, uh, mutations of course, uh, fortune, as I mentioned before, creatures of course, uh, part of the the rules regarding networks and hacking, albeit it you probably uh, be very hard situations where you you use them uh, AI and automata of course also very hair um, the mecha suite from the the mecha capture uh, also hair uh, land vehicles of course the the main core element fly machines which is also kind of hair mm -hmm. and capture 29 where you find uh, collapsed economic systems which is very central to, to the world and also like um, also in Ars of the Hems you also have the option uh, in chapter 30 that um, explains how games and sports work in the world mm -hmm. yeah. mm, but of course uh, the game is uh, belongs to, to the players so of course uh, game masters must be must feel free yeah. to to add what they think will fit in the world and also uh, remove from it elements that uh, they don't think fit well in the world uh, i'm um, of course i'm okay with that and and Fun, fun is the most important thing, and if you want one element uh, is missing uh, for the players to have fun, well, yeah, add it to the game. Or if one one element is too much for for a group of players, well, remove it. I'm all of it. Yeah, I can I can get I can get behind that. Um, mm -hmm. So, but like I said, both. Of with both of these, you foresee them being ab being about seventy pa seventy um, pages each, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, that that's um, a broad uh, calculation. I it may change, of course. It also may change depending on how many factions and characters I receive from backers that um, back on, on those levels. That also can can change the the, um, the size of the book and uh, with these two books we are doing the same approach used with the Batman playing game, which is um, this, this campaign is um, a genuine uh, crowdfund campaign. It's not a pre-order campaign, so. We the the books are not ready, uh, but we have all the elements in place to make it happen and happen in a short period of time. So we, we published by the role playing game in six months since the campaign before it ended, mm -hmm. and they are more than confident that we will be able to do the same with these two books. Uh, they together they have just a third of the size of the by the role playing game. 
So the the page count may vary. It may become uh, bigger or or have less less pages, but um, the the content will not change. Uh, you have at least this twenty four thousand words of written material awaiting mm -hmm. for the campaign to end and for the layout work to start. All right, I I got you, and I'll cer I'll certainly be keeping a close eye on how on how it develops on my on my end. But with all that appreciate. said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on to the sh come on to the show and enjoy and enjoy the madness that happens here. Thank you, sir. My pleasure to be here. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. And I, pr I promise to not screw up time zones this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not a problem. Oh. Thank you very much, Mildra. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, as I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come on and enjoy the, in in enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>